Alright, time for a Fake Physics of the Week award. And uh, this week, whatever week it is, I don't know, pre-recording this video. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's Jim Alcoholi. And um, I have done this video in the past, I believe, but we'll do it again. This visit is so bad, and it's such a perfect representation of how bad this talking head physics, pop culture physics, jargon nonsense is. All these exaggerated statements about what kind of evidence they have and what kind of experiments prove something. You know, uh, just a lot of hype and no grunt work in the sense of like Darwin taking 10 years to compile your evidence and be very, uh, very careful. Um, not even like Newton as the example where Newton would tell you what it does, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't pretend to know why it does it. He, he might suggest some ideas, um, possible solutions to the problem, but he'd offer them as suggestions, not facts, not we know it, you know, we've done our job, we've proven the case. So all this exaggerated statements about really simple experiments and dirt simple experiments they really should have tested to pieces and they didn't test them even a little bit they just did thought experiments on them and, and pretended that's good science and it's just rubbish uh, to use a British colloquialism now I'm going to explain to you Depend oh, great. Oh, my God, I didn't need that. Oh, oof. Oof. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's known as the central mystery of quantum mechanics. Well, Richard Feynman, the American physicist, said, this is the central mystery of quantum mechanics. There's lots of... Yeah, 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 right. This is, they keep calling it the nail in the coffin experiment, all these exaggerated claims, and they can't describe it accurately to you know, save their lives. They just can't do it. They can't be honest about what the experiment does and certainly can't be honest about how their mathematics just makes a general statement that isn't actually specifically accurate. And they won't even concede that when that's just obvious. Just like their lensing experiments for gravity, their lensing images have huge incongruities in them things that just don't make any mathematical sense. They're the wrong shapes, they're in the wrong places, they're all kinds of problems, and they won't admit any of the problems. They just keep selling it like, this doesn't improve it, see? It's almost right. It's almost looks like, almost looks like. You know, it's bad enough when it looks like the butler did it, is all you do as an investigation. The butler looks guilty. He's got a kind of a crookedy face. And if that's all you do for an investigation, you know, you'd be laughable as a detective. And that's how bad this is. It used to be that they would go with, it looks like. Now they go with, well, it almost looks like. And that's enough proof for them. That's how inquiring their minds are. They want to believe it, so they believe it. It doesn't have anything to do with the facts or the evidence. It's some weird stuff that goes on in the quantum world. Hit you with this and it basically tells you what it's all about. It's called the so again, the complete fable he's going to tell about the history and the reality, completely made up nonsense, really not even close to what the truth is and the knowable truth is. Um, just make up a story. The two-slit experiment. I'll start with this. Imagine you have a source of light, shot... I think this is a different one than the one I played before because I don't remember that silly tie. I really don't. <laughs> but anyway, let's play along. I, I'm sure it'll be just as bad as the other presentation. Against a screen with two slits. Now, for the pedants in the audience, this source of light has to be monochromatic light. light of the okay, so this is, again, at the Royal Institute. So this used to be a place where just the, you know, the heady people would go to learn what new things have happened in science, and Rutherford and all the important people would go there and demonstrate some new phenomenon they discovered, and now it's just turned into this little comic cartoon, uh, dumbed-down, uh, you know, physics for the masses kind of bullshit. Uh, you know, an amusement park. A show. 
particular wavelength. Well, whereas, of course, a light bulb is white light, and that's made up of all the colors of the spectrum, and lots of different wavelengths. But imagine this is just a single wavelength of light, and you can see the light is coming out in, 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 uh, in waves like, like ripples in a pond. That's the nature of you know, wave-like behavior. It's like, it's like, it's like. <laughs> yeah, so they don't really appear to be coming out as anything. We don't see the light come out as anything. So clearly we don't know that it's coming out as ripples in a pond. All we see is an on-off pattern. Again, they've decided that because water waves in one circumstance do that, in one circumstance, not in the single opening, not in the many opening, all of a sudden the comparisons disappear. As the light hits the screen, it squeezes through the two slits. And each slit in turn on the other side becomes almost like a new source of light. And the light... So this is, you know, that's the Huygens principle would be that somehow at each slit, well, in this case they don't Huygens because Huygens would break the function. So they leave the waves as single waves. There's no real Huygens, so it doesn't have to squeeze out or do any of that stuff. A uh, wave goes in, a wave pops out the other end, is essentially what they're saying. And the two waves are bulged somehow because the light slowed down or there was friction or you know, some kind of nonsense. I mean, we know, again, we know the physics of why water waves don't go through straight. That's because there's adhesion between the surfaces and the water molecules and they just don't move as fast when they're against the surface but they're all tied to each other, so the slow ones slow down the fast ones because they're all connected to each other, and that's what creates the round wave. But there's no mechanism for round waves with photons. Again, there's just, just a story they're telling. They're making up all this part. There's no, we don't see any of this, and we don't see any of that, and all we see is two slits, and then we see a bunch of bars on the other side that could, in fact, just be images of the slits, as far as we know spreads out, it diffracts. And as the waves of light overlap, they will interfere with each other. So where a crest hits uh, a trough, they will cancel. Where a crest hits a crest, they will amplify, and so on. And, and again, that's not really what happens physically in water waves. Um, you know, what happens is it goes, it goes double high and then double low, and then double high and then double low. And it's doubling because the water from the flat areas, the places where the water is hitting each other, one's going up and one's going down, that cancellation, obviously the energy has to go somewhere. And that energy does go right or left. It helps push the other wave up or push the other wave down. And so on the back screen, you end up with what's called an interference pattern, a, a, a series of light and dark fringes where the waves have either cancelled out or worked together in phase. Yeah, this is different. Um, so anyway, just as bad. But anyway, um, and clearly they're showing it in this way that light doesn't do, which is this nice gradient, a little bright bar right in the center, and then it gets fades to dark, and then there's a little dark line. That's not what the pattern does in light. It does that with electrons. It doesn't do it with light. So just all these little subtle cheats, uh, you know, and even the spacing on this is silly. The, they, the spacing doesn't do this disproportional spacing. Um, and they're certainly not showing much enough of the pattern to show you that in the double slit experiment, what it's supposed to do with the standard width openings is it's supposed to create the two patterns, that is the envelope pattern. Uh, one pattern and another pattern uh, made of the first pattern. Two patterns. That's fine. That's not quantum mechanics. That's a property of light that goes back over to... No, it's not a property of light. So he just made up this silly thing. It's, the only thing that's the property of light is that when you put it through a small aperture, you force the light next to surfaces, it does get diffracted. That's the property of light I could say we could all agree on. Surfaces make light diffract. We should be all able to agree on. Uh, surfaces cause diffraction when you go plowing through them this way, right? So if this is a surface and I plow through it this way, we know that's going to bend the light. So why would we think that if the light goes this way, it's not going to also get diffracted? Just a little bit of common sense. 200 years that we've known about since the early 19th century. 
Imagine doing the same experiment. So again, he said the early 19th century when Newton did these experiments. This is just, that's just, he's just showed you Newton's rings. He didn't show you anything different. It's the same idea. Newton had already discovered force light to interact with something, it'll be diffracted. Force it through a lens, it'll be diffracted. He already did these experiments. So this is all just kind of, you know, and part of the lie. Let's pretend we didn't know about this for that extra 200 years, well, 100 years. Again, but doing it not with waves, but with particles. Do it with grains of sand. So this is the same experiment, but I've tipped it 90 degrees. Rather than waves that are spread out that wash up against the two slits and squeeze through. So, um, you know, it's fair to say, okay, water, uh, something in a medium is different than sand. Just as we know we can't make sand vibrate waves and waves won't be transmitted through particles that aren't connected to each other. But again, this has nothing to do with what we're supposed to be, they're supposed to be talking about, which is physics, okay? Physics has the idea that we know that atoms are, you know, 99% empty space. So, you know, the surface is much more complicated than just a regular surface. There's no concession to that reality at all. No concession to what we know about them as um, atomic structures in the sense that the protons and the electrons have relationships and that there's free electrons, essentially, that are not bound specifically to any individual atom, but are bound to the fact that the atoms do have protons. Here, you've got individual particles of sand, and each particle would either go through one slit or the other. And so you see they will sort of drain through and you get two bumps underneath each of the slits. So right. So again, uh, we already know that light doesn't act like sand. There. We can draw that conclusion. It's not sand. But why did, would we think it is? And we also know that surfaces aren't wooden surfaces. They have flat edges. The sand can flow right next to it, no problem. So we know that, you know, photons moving... Uh, you know, through uh, atmosphere, you know, of electrons is a little different than sand moving through a slit. So the two peaks is reminiscent of... Right, again, so reminiscent is all we need. So the, again, this is where they get in all the trouble with these models, right? Because they look up at the cosmos and they say, look, things orbit and go around, so therefore we'll make atoms do the same thing. And, you know, we, I think logically some people might understand that that's probably a mistake, that the, the fundamental elemental forces might have some similarity in the same thing and the idea that circles might still exist or squares would exist or some geometry might be the same up there as in down there, but it would be really stupid to say it's the same mechanism. Article-like behavior, whereas the, the multiple pattern of interference is wave-like behavior. What if we do the same experiment with atoms? Well, uh, so imagine we have an atom gun, something can fire uh, atoms, a, a stream of atoms. So we have the simulation, not the actual experiment. Um, so this is where the lying will start, no doubt. Atoms, you can't see them because they're very small. Let's block off one of the two slits. So these two slits are, are you know, the, the, the dimensions and separation of the slits is, is, is chosen appropriately to to show us uh, how atoms do things. And so far, so good. Nothing strange here. You'll see a lot of atoms hitting the back screen. So this will now have to be some sort of... So again, this is... The, uh, uh, I would say this is just garbage. There's no such experiment has been done where they got no pattern from a single slit. It's never been done. No pattern. So he's saying that somehow the quantum mechanical effect, the Heisenberg principle doesn't exist for atoms going through a single slit. That somehow they don't spread. They don't diverge and they don't create a pattern. So I'm saying this was never done. The, it's not gonna, there's no citations here, obviously. But this, is, this experiment was never done. This is just a, this is a simulation for the purpose of this, this theater. It has nothing to do with a reality out there. Sort of photosensitive screen where, whereby when an atom hits it, they'll, it'll give off a little flash of light to say the atom has arrived here. So the atoms are arriving as these little pinpricks of light that we see. Of course, a lot of the atoms will be blocked by the first screen. They won't go through that slit. Uh, but those that do get through to the other side, you can see there's a bit of spreading of, of, of the atoms. 
But if we didn't know anything about atoms, you'd say, well, that's fine, we can understand that. Um, uh, again, this experiment, if it had actually been done, it would have been huge big news because we would have defeated Heisenberg because we could make that slit smaller and smaller and we could know exactly the location so we no longer are bound by this quantum mechanical law anymore that we can't know the location of these little things so obviously the experiment was never done because if they did it it violates Heisenberg and we're free of it finally no more Heisenberg to worry about some, a lot of the atoms are going clean through the slit some are sort of maybe bouncing off the edge of the slit and so they're sort of being deflected a bit, which is why you get a bit, a bit of a spread. So, just a story, okay? There is no, absolutely no evidence anywhere on the internet that this ever was done, okay? I've researched the two slit to pieces, never done. Uh, it just never was done. The first mystery of quantum mechanics comes when we open the second slit. Because now we see so, just a complete fake, all this is complete fake. Fake, 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 fake. Number one, the pattern with atoms is never this good, <laughs> frankly. Um, and again, there was no, we blocked one of the slits and we got no pattern. There's no theory for that. We already know that the single slit creates a ton of pattern, just as much pattern as the double slit. And the only difference is, is the single slit doesn't have two patterns. There's no envelope of, you know, a secondary pattern. But that's the only real distinction besides the fact that the, the brightnesses of the center um, beam is uh, less bright in the two slit. But that's it. Tiny differences. So this is just, this is just a, a fake. It's just fake. It's fake physics for the purpose of, of um, uh, propaganda in defense of a silly notion that they're going to keep telling us has to be the truth. And this is their terrible evidence. Their evidence is absolutely awful. They have so little evidence, they're resorting to this cheating. They have to so grossly cheat the facts. That's how poorly evidenced their fundamental notions are. That they have to go to this length to just make up fake experiments that weren't even done <coughs> to demonstrate the solidity of their bullshit. I mean, anybody who gave a shit about the truth should find this terribly offensive. Something that's very much like the interference pattern we got with light. Rather than having two bands of, of, of uh, spots where the atoms have gone through the two slits, it's as though the atoms have gone through the slits behaving like waves. And, 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 and you get interference of the waves and you get these bands. If we know or it's just like if the slits are irritating the atoms, causing them to move at a new angle. Because near the slits there's a bunch of electrons and the atoms are hitting those electrons and they're having changes made into their momentum. And that, that's why they're moving to a different location. Yeah. I wonder how they're going to shove frequency into this, because you know, their argument is that the atoms have a frequency somehow. Somehow they have a wavelength, even though they won't have a real wavelength of any kind. They just have momentum. They have a certain amount of speed. So when they interact with the electrons, the, if they're going really fast, you could logically understand the faster I make them go, the less hitting the electrons is going to disturb their motion. But the slower they're going, the more those electron hits are going to change their direction. I mean, you can understand that just from, like, car mechanics or something. The faster you go over a bumpy road, the less it affects your direction. The slower you go over it, the more it screws you up. The thing about atoms or quantum mechanics, you could try and rationalize and say, well, you know, maybe atoms behave in a very strange way, and... Um, so, so, so again, he talks as if there's no knowledge of this from 350 years ago when Newton did the experiment. So it's almost like we're just pretending Newton didn't exist and he never did these experiments. We didn't already know that the small universe doesn't act like the big universe, that photons aren't billiard balls, photons aren't bowling balls. They're interacting in a charge world, and they are, them, they are in fact, charged. They are the essence of the force. They are the virtual photons of magnetism. You know, they're just pretending that we don't know that already. A certain number of them are allowed to all sit together. 
So, you know, me and my gang, we're all going to go on this slit. No, sorry, no room for you. You go to the next slit above. And by the way, there's this rule that no one can go in between the, the two bands, but a few <coughs> the atoms do. So there's a bit of a, a scatter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. yeah, so what was that, right? What was all that? There's a bit of a scatter, but the scatter doesn't mean anything. But it didn't really happen. And, it, uh, you know, certainly when they went through the one slit, somehow they didn't do any of that. So again, they, he already broke Heisenberg when he showed the demonstration of them going through one slit and not creating a pattern. He already destroyed, just blew Heisenberg right out of the water. And what, nobody but me noticed? So I mean, physicists watch this, or people who know something about physicists, physics, and they know that his demonstration obviously couldn't be the truth, that no such experiment was ever done, because the minute you know, somebody publishes an experiment where they send atoms through a small slit and they don't diffract and create a pattern, that's the minute they broke Heisenberg. And they certainly blew Heus uh, Huygens out of the water. We don't... There could be some forces between atoms that make them coordinate their actions in a way to give this pattern. That's but now we go single atom at a time, which again, why, why doesn't he just stick with the experiments that have actually been done? So again, now he's, he's dragged this all the way up to the atom scale, again, where the pattern is really horrible. Okay, it, it's nothing to write home about in terms of a beautiful, great pattern. Um, <clears throat> so, and why not use the experiments that we already know work? I mean, why is he nailing himself to this stupid atom coffin? It's not mysterious. That's just, we just don't know how atoms do things. But we can be clever, and we can force the issue. What if we were to not send the atoms all through at once? So, so again, he's talking about an experiment that just, again, there's no reason to think that that experiment demonstrates it very well because the pattern is so bad. So... Again, I'm not saying they didn't do the experiment where they tried to send one atom at a time. Now, I don't know of any gun that can shoot one atom at a time, but let's say they invented some, some method to send one atom to the experiment at a time that's somehow not thermodynamically messed up. Um, you know, that's, that's going to be able to try, that, that's going to travel a straight path. Uh, <laughs> Again, yeah, it just doesn't make much sense to be using atoms. But anyway, um, so I'm not saying they didn't do one atom at a time. And we already know that the, at one atom at a t the one thing at a time is where they get this property. So obviously it says to you, again, it's more evidence for there must be a better explanation. Because, yes, if the slits are causing it, if the surfaces are causing the effect, then it wouldn't matter whether they're one at a time or together. So you don't even have this problem. You don't have to worry about what slit it went through or any of that nonsense, because you know the slits are causing the effect, not the atom. But send them through one at a time. Leave enough of a gap for the atom to get through to hit the screen. Of course, as I say, some atoms will um, hit, the, uh, hit the, the, the first screen and not get through, but those that get through will hit the back screen. So let's run the experiment again slowly. And gradually you'll see, as the atoms go through, they'll be, look like they're just randomly arriving on... So again, this, this using the t double slit as if you need two slits to create the pattern, which is nonsense, so they could just put one slit in here, just like Newton did, get the same pattern on the wall, and then you wouldn't have this excuse to, what, what the slit did it go through? What You'd know that it has nothing to do with going through two slits. So I'm just saying the single slit experiment already debunks this nonsense that we have to worry about what slit did the photon go through because we know the single slit creates the same pattern, um, a similar pattern. And the only thing the two slit does that's different, again, is create the double pattern. The double pattern, by the way, they have no explanation for. They don't have any... The double slit in water waves doesn't create two patterns. They don't have any place to understand where that second pattern is coming from, so they're just clueless, and yet they're so confident that this is right, even though they have no explanation for what the thing actually does, and certainly they're not showing you what it actually does, which is just part of the lie here. This is just such fake physics. On the other side. About the most important, fundamental, elemental uh, experiments of their subject. This is the foundation. This is the bedrock. This is the, the you know, the, this is where it all started. 
and they they can't describe the the foundation with any integrity. They can't show you how it's made of real cement. They're just showing you that it is quicksand, that it's just mush. They made this whole thing, this whole story is made out of nothing. The first kernel is garbage. You keep sending atoms through one at a time, and gradually that same pattern appears. With this single slit, just the same. So one slit does exactly the same thing. So each atom by itself is somehow contributing its small part to the overall wave-like behavior. So instead of saying each surface seems to be affecting the outcome of where the photons end up. As we bring the surfaces closer together, the photons tend to move more and more erratically, indicating what? That maybe this has something to do with the photons being affected by whatever's on the surface of the material you're shooting them through. <laughs> that we see in the interference pattern. How does it do it? How, how, how does, we know the atom is a tiny localized particle, we can't see it, it's too small to even see under a microscope, we're firing it at the, the, the screen with the two slits. Some moment later, you see a flash of light on the back screen. It's so again, <clears throat> um, he's using the atom example where if he showed the real experimental results, you'd see just how bad it is. There's just a tiny bit of a pattern, and it almost is so bad that you could say, yeah, those are actual deflections off the slits. <laughs> because the atoms are big enough to deflect off the other atoms. Arrive in a localized point. It's not spread itself out. You don't get sort of like a wash of a, sort of a faint light across the whole screen. It's a little point. The atom is localized. It's arrived in a certain location. And yet, it somehow seems to have been aware of there being two slits, not one. <clears throat> so again, he has under the insane delusion that a single slit doesn't produce the same pattern, when, of course, it does. Uh, you make it really narrow, the pattern spreads, so each bar gets really thick, okay, and there aren't going to be too many of them, but very few th photons are going through, but as you widen the slit, the bars get more numerous and, more s and smaller in size, and you can have 40 or 50 of them with a single slit with photons. Because it's given rise to this interference pattern. How does one atom do that? Does it split in half? Does it become like a, a cloud that goes through both? Well, we can try and be even cleverer. What if we were... So now he's just going to just lie. I mean, just talk about stuff that was never... We can try to be a little more clever in the sense that we can imagine doing experiments that we won't bother doing. We to spy on the atom and see where it goes. Just gently just observe which slit it goes through. So there's no experiment. I couldn't find any experiment where they actually attempted with atoms to see which slit it went through. Because with atoms, they should be able to do it. Frankly, they can throw a little bit of photon at an atom without disturbing it too much. They'll disturb it, but it won't ruin it. So they can detect what's, you know, especially when they're just trying to detect momentum in these, these, in this direction. So if they're attempting to the decipher which momentum it has in this direction if they hit it with photons in this direction then all they'll do is change you know the altitude of the pattern they won't be substantially changing the momentum so they should be able to do it with atoms how come they had didn't do it so you put a detector just above the upper slit that will flash or beep whenever it sees an atom go through that top slit so, at least in this change of his version, he doesn't have an experiment that can't be done. Okay, the one where they attempt to detect photons with this little magic black box that never existed. Obviously, you can't detect photons. It's just insane to think you can hit a photon with a photon, tell where the photon is. Uh, and electrons are likewise incredibly sensitive to being hit by photons and having their momentum changed by the energy. So, you can't realistically do it with electrons either. So, yes, the only place you can realistically do it is with atoms, and they've never done it. Sure enough, you fire the atoms through, one at a time. 50% of the time, the detector will beep. 
So, again, an experiment never done. No proof, no evidence, nothing. Never done. Just, he's just lying. I mean, it's just completely fake physics. Uh, citing experiments that don't exist. And this is their foundation. Again, let's, th let's understand. This is the foundation of their physics, and they're just overtly faking it. The other 50% of the time it doesn't, the assumption being that the atom has gone through the lower slit. But of course, I've been cheeky here. I haven't shown you the results of the experiment. So again, no evidence of this at all ever been done. Never. Just It just made this crap up. This just never happened. Isn't there, shouldn't there be a crime? Shouldn't this be a, some kind of crime? A, some violation of the science rules? You don't get to go to the Royal Institution and just basically lie about an experiment Newton did 300 years ago with, without the detector, of course. But there's absolutely no reason to believe the detector would cause the atoms to become narrow again. There's every reason to believe the detector, if it was going to interfere with the atoms, that it would spread them even more that it would cause them to scatter, okay? Because you're putting energy in, in all kinds of directions, and you're going to cause the atoms that were already deflected to deflect even more. So the pattern should be blended all over the place. So again, these results are completely, you can, you can logically know this can't possibly be the experiment they did because there's no reason to believe the detector makes the photon less chaotic. It takes away its chaoticness. No reason to believe that. Preposterous as, an, as um, a, a, a hypothesis. And again, this is just hypothesizing. This has nothing to do with an actual experimental data. It's just, I mean, it's an overt lie. Please, people, can't, you can't call this a lie when you claim they did this? Well, when you turn on the detector, when you look as if they did this, they didn't do the experiment. It's a fucking lie. What you get. 50% of the time it beeps and you see a spot arrive adjacent to the upper slit. The other half of the time it doesn't beep. So somehow, right? So somehow the magical detector made the photon more straight. The interference was to make the photon more perfect. It didn't screw it up, it unscrewed it. Does it make any sense to you? The detector you know, somehow didn't put chaos in, it took chaos out. Do you see a spot arrive at the lower slit? So, yeah, it's picked out the atoms that have gone through the upper slit and not the ones that have gone through. So each atom does go through one slit or the other. So again, just more nonsense, right? They never proved that. They've never done the experiment to know that. I would say, obviously, the, the whole very idea of thinking that these photons go through both slits is just absolute baby talk. Uh, but whatever. Uh, this is just a story. This is a completely made up Little Red Riding Hood story. Little Red Riding Hood probably is based on more of a true story than this big pile of, of fake. <clears throat> but that's a different result to what we had earlier. So here's the last bit of sneakiness that we can play with atoms. Surely now. So he's, he's going to go from preposterous lie to ludicrous lie. We're going to get to grips with it. Leave the detector there, but just very quietly go and unplug it. Okay, so this never, I mean, just, you know how silly this sounds, right? This is just silly. And it really wasn't that they, the story, okay, as the Little Red Riding Hood story goes, the idea wasn't that you unplug the detector. It's that you don't look at the results. So if you don't, um, if you're not really, okay, um, collecting the information in the sense of, uh, in a usable form, then you, f the, the photons, um, <laughs> you know, know that your detector, you know, how to say this correctly, if you don't look at the results, it still, it still thinks you did. Now, if you don't look at the results, the pattern changes. But if you look, it's a Schrodinger's box bullshit. If you do look at the results, then the pattern um, goes back to the other pattern. So somehow the photons know whether you actually looked. It's that bad a story. 
Don't let the Axons know that you're not spying on them. Make them think that you're still detecting them. So, yeah, 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 okay, we're going to run the experiment, Atoms. Okay, get ready, one at a time. We're going to be checking on you. All right, so run the experiment again. <laughs> now, if you can explain this using common sense and logic... There's no reason to explain it, right? Because it's just made up. It's a silly three pig story, or it's a, the three bear story. So he's basically coming to this, the royal institution... He's, this has got 1.5 uh, 1. million views, 13,000 thumbs up for just a, a rubbish story where he sits there and tells me a Goldilocks story about three bears and then tells me, explain that. Well, the explanation is you made it up. That's the explanation. There aren't any talking bears. They don't wear hats. They don't smoke peeps. They don't eat fucking goddamn well. They don't put their, their grits in frickin' oatmeal bowls or whatever. Do let me know, because there's a Nobel Prize for you. So that's the big joke of this. I mean, it's just, it's that serious a subject where they will talk about Nobel Prizes if you could do this experiment proving Heisenberg is wrong, right? And so that's basically what he said. The experiment proves Heisenberg's wrong because the single slit created no pattern. So obviously you could make this slit smaller and smaller, no pattern. So therefore you've proven Heisenberg's nonsense. So that's just so bad. That's just so bad. So again, people try try to defend this. So so you know how do they all defend this? He, I think he's even played this clip on his channel. This absolute rubbish, garbage, fake, phony lie physics, and it's okay. Somehow this is somehow this is how you're supposed to present the subject is just to lie about it. And, and in an environment again where I'm claiming their evidence is so insanely weak. And this is why it's this bad. It's because they really don't have any rational evidence to defend their theory. All they have is lies and fake and made-up crap. Because the truth doesn't defend what they claim is the truth. Just as the facts of the lensing in the, in this, in this, in the galaxies demonstrate that it's not in all the places it should be. There's places all over the place where we know there's a lot of gravity. And we know there's stuff behind that gravity. And we know the light should be bent, but it's not bent. They don't have any explanation. They just ignore those facts. So they not only they quote my experiments, you know, they pick the two slit, you know, just focus on that because the single slit's harder to explain and the theory will sound way too wacky. So they 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 just ignore it and they they ignore the multi slits because oh yeah, those are images going to the locations and how you explain how perfect images go to all these locations because wave interference won't make an image go to an oak location. So they quote mine the evidence that does exist, and then, as if that isn't a crime enough, they just make up fables and, and silly stories that pretend that this is uh, some sort of, uh, that, that their, their nail in the coffin, that their nails are somehow made out of steel. <laughs> They're made out of uh, rice cakes. I mean, <laughs> these aren't nails. This is silly. They're imaginary. The whole thing is imaginary. It's all in their little brains. This, this whole fable of their wave-particle duality and their mysterious universe and their multiverses and their dark matter and their dark... It's all made-up story. It's a religion. It's full of made-up characters. This is just made-up physics. It has nothing to do with reality. And it's overt. It's right there for you to see. How can you people tell me? I mean, these people aren't stupid. Uh, you know, I mean, all these people that uh, are, know some physics... They went to college. They have some reasoning skills. Can't they see how phony this was? Can't they see how this was just full of things that just aren't true? And, and aren't they repulsed by it? Aren't they offended by it? That, oh, shit, they shouldn't be doing this. They shouldn't be lying for our cause. This is fake news. This is an engineered story. This is as bad as some guy saying, I was beaten up by a bunch of racists. This is a lie. <laughs> okay, and that's all it is. And you people should be as pissed off by it as I am. Instead, you'll defend it. This guy's a professor. You know, he's got a doctorate. You have to be a doctor to be such a preposterous liar? Come on.
So again, if you can explain this using common sense and logic, yeah, the explanation is as humans are lying scum. Clearly, they'll lie about anything. They'll lie about physics experiments. That's how despicable they are. They won't even just lie to their wives and lie to all... <laughs> they'll lie about physics experiments. They're just such compulsive liars. They just have to lie about every fucking thing. Because there's a Nobel Prize in it for you. So I get a Nobel Prize for proving you to be a liar? <laughs> yeah, okay. But that's the explanation. You just made it up. You read it in a cartoon. You read it on a Bazooka Joe, uh, you know, bubblegum comic. You didn't get this evidence from any legitimate location. You, you, you bought it at a, a, a joke shop. It's not meant to be taken seriously. Enough ranting. But it's just amazing that I get so much grief from people and people who claim that somehow I'm cheating when their cheats are so overt, so outrageous about the foundation of their physics, the foundational experiments they're lying about. You know, the Eddington experiment, eh, the double slit experiment, the interferometer and the beam splitter. Again, another thing that's apparently violating Heisenberg. Oh, you people are just amazing.